Good morning children, we start chemistry class today for class 7, our topic is matter and its composition. Matter we see around us in various forms, we have got so many things around us, everything we consider as a matter irrespective of its physical existence may be solid, liquid or gas. In modern civilization, we see these matters are made up of atoms, molecules, radicals, ions. Previously, when it started earlier, Greeks used to have four elements. They had water, air, earth and fire. These were the four elements they used to have, fire, air, water and the earth. These were considered by the Greek philosophers. Later on means at the same time rather not, not later on at the same time Indian philosophers they considered five elements of everything, everything is made up of five elements they considered and they named as Panch Bhutas. These Panch Bhutas are actually Chiti means Dharti the earth, up Jal the water, Tejas the sun, the fire, Marut means air, Vayu and Vyom the sky, the space, we call it Akash. So, these were the five elements of anything we see around us, it was considered by the Indian philosophers. That time great Indian Rishi Maharshi Kannad, he considered these all are as Padarth and he said they are made up of fine components, fine particles called Anu, today's molecule we call them and Param Anu, Parmanu, Param Anu absolute particle that is for atoms. Modern science, science says these, John Dalton also has brought the same concept but much later that matter is made up of Anu means the molecules and Paramanu, Parmanu means the atoms. So, we come to the matter as anything that occupies space This occupying space is actually the volume, has mass and can be perceived by our senses. This mass is actually the amount of matter contained in a body is called the mass. So, anything that occupies space has mass and can be perceived by your senses is matter. Now, we can go for it, like we take a glass, if I pour water, we take two glasses, two glasses with say this bottle. If I weigh the empty bottle and at the same time bottle with water, bottle with water will be little more than that of the empty bottle bottle of will water bottle with water will be more than that of the bottle only that means water also carries some weight weight is actually the mass into gravitational force we call weight weight is a variable quantity it depends on gravitational force and varies from place to place so that thing not only the occupy occupying occupiance of the space there and 
it also pro provides some weight for that that means it has got mass. We can go have the same experiment with balloons. If I take two inflated same size balloons they will show the same mass. So, the weight will also be same. Now, if one of the balloons is pricked, one of the balloon is pricked, will be showing this figure that means air with the balloon will be weighing more than the balloon without air. That means air also has mass and when we inflate the balloon, balloon inflates due to the air going into it providing an external outward force pressure and that is why the balloon inflate. We can have the same experiment with a glass keeping it under water means half the wa half under water half remains above the water level and when we just tilt the glass the air comes out and water goes in that shows by the bubbling and that shows the amount of certain amount of air was there occupying the space. And third clause that is the perceive, perceiving the by the physical senses simply I can touch it. If I go in front of the fan if I go in front of the fan I can easily feel that the breeze is there that shows gas also has got the water at the same time I can take water on my hand that also proves that it has it can be felt by the physical senses. So, third point third clause is perceiving by the physical senses we have we can call them as matter besides these two there are two more features we see for matter one is they have matters have inertia and matters occupy space. Inertia we call it there is a tendency of the matter to continue with the existing state, state of rest or state of motion, state of rest or state of uniform motion in a straight line until there is an external force applying on it. It will maintain its physical state and hence we call it inertia it is shown by a matter and when there is a that there is an inertial part that has to offer resistance. Resistance is the force offered by the matter that is the substance in opposite direction always if it is moving it will try, it will try to stop if it is at rest it will try to move. And at the same time this happens to be only when the matter is made up of particles and those particles may be molecules, atoms, ions, radicals etcetera or in turn protons, neutrons, electrons means the nucleons and the electrons in the matter, in the molecule, in the atom. So, there are five characteristic features we see for matter. Number one is it occupies space. Number 2 is it has mass, number 3 it can be perceived by the physical senses, number 4 it has got inertia and number 5 it offers resistance. These actually explain what a matter is. Now, matter comes whenever matter comes, matter comes in 3 different states. matter exist in initially in solid and fluids. This is a new concept directly please do not go for liquids and gases go by fluids that means solids means 
which do not flow they are called solids and which flow are called fluids. Now, this flowing will be from two aspects one is liquids flow from higher to lower level and gases flow in all directions these are the states of matter besides these three states there are two more states that is plasma state and Bose Einstein condensate you will be doing it in the higher classes. Basically there are three states solids liquids and gases liquids and gases since they flow they are considered as fluid solids do not flow. Now there is a big question here why do they not flow? So, we should be knowing the characteristic features of solids, liquids and gases, they are different states of matter. There are few terms like intermolecular space. Intermolecular force 